This is like the worst possible angle ever, but there's a reason behind this. As you guys can tell by the title, I'm showing you guys my vintage band magazine collection. And yeah, I thought it would be an interesting random video because you guys see I have these random 90s magazine covers all up on my wall. Before I get into the video though, like and subscribe. Do you guys appreciate this mic stand? Very legendary stuff happening right now. Like what is this? Am I doing a podcast? Not really. This is just a fun video. But before I start, I guess I'll explain why I get magazines from the 90s and band magazines, but not just band magazines. Later in this video, I might show you guys something a little bit different. Still a magazine, but a different type of vibe. But my whole thing with all these collectibles is basically I like older stuff that's just a terrible description but that's pretty much what it is you know people collect vhs's some people collect cds i just collect a bunch of stuff and this started off a couple years ago i want to say like two years ago when i was heavy into mtv and 90s mtv obviously with 120 minutes and i was just addicted to watching these clips on youtube of matt pinfield interviewing a bunch of bands that I adore. So that's kind of what sparked my interest in just finding these older magazines with bands I enjoy and just looking through them, seeing what kind of ads were going on back then. I guess I'll start off with the first magazine I just showed you guys, and that was this not 90s but 1986 option magazine with sonic youth on the cover and i recently just purchased this because my favorite album from sonic youth is their evil album and i think that's their best album so i kind of just wanted to have some piece of memorabilia i guess from that era in 1986 which evil was released and i've been only getting magazines from the 90s and yeah, basically the 90s. So this is my first 80s magazine and I'm used to glossy paper-like material, but this sort of has that 70s, very newspaper-esque quality. Here's Sonic Youth looking pretty badass and, you know, just in the element, a little live photo. And I'm very infatuated with finding all these articles within the magazines and just reading you know it's just a cool time capsule i guess and i know i've mentioned it on youtube i believe a lot on tiktok i'm 22 years old and born in 2001 so obviously i wasn't here during this time i don't know what it is with it man i don't really have like the craziest analysis when it comes to this i'm kind of just showing you guys my favorite toys or whatever and uh, i hope you guys like it so that last magazine was sonic youth and i just realized that i recently went on a huge sonic youth spending spree in terms of magazines magazines and i bought my first uk magazine it's called melody maker and i'm gonna show you guys it right now but beware because this is humongous i mean look at this look look i'm just gonna start from the bottom and then go up it just keeps going what that is humongous let me compare it look at that it's like okay i'm not doing it justice but look the difference and it's not in the best condition, but I kind of just ripped out some pages and I'm going to move a couple of them pages in the background, put um, a little bit more swag into my background for you guys so it's not boring, you know, switch it up and stuff. And I'm not going to go into crazy detail with this one because it's kind of demolished, but it's cool to see a UK magazine or newspaper and look at it from a United States point of view. And let me just finish off the Sonic Youth Trio with this 1990 Alternative Press magazine. I believe it's 1990, but it's really cool. Really in their element, and you could see all of them just chilling. And one of my more favorite things that I do now is go through it and find bands I'm not really familiar with and just check out the music. I know that sounds so basic, but I didn't really do that until recently. Back then, honestly, I would just look at the section that the whole magazine was based on. And by based on, I mean what band was on the cover. I would check out their article and what they had to say. That sounds so stupid, but I really was a little bit closed-minded back then. I didn't really care about what else was on there. Of course, I would look at the ads and stuff, but the bands, I didn't really pay attention to. But yeah, that's enough of Sonic Youth. I feel like I've been only talking about Sonic Youth, but it's just a collection, so it makes sense. Now, this next magazine is probably my favorite magazine, and I showed it in a video or two videos ago, and this is the Breeders Option magazine. Look at that beauty. The colorization on this is outstanding. And look at the back, bro. The band Porno for Pyros is on it, and it's just so 90s colorful and just wow. 
Sorry if I'm not doing it justice, but you know, I'm trying my best for you guys. Yeah, 1993 issue, and there's a lot of cool bands in here. It's a lot of more alternative indie rock based. Just turning the first page, you can see Sebado in here, and it's just like, what? I love Sebado, man. Shout out Lou Barlow. You are not watching this video, but in my mind, you are. You got Butthole Surfers in here. You got a plethora of bands. Here's that Sebado page I was talking about. And it's so cool seeing bands that I remember I used to listen to a little bit. And here's one of the bands. It's called, or they're called Hammerbox. Whoa. Can you see that? And Hammerbox was a band I checked out uh, during the grunge era of my life. I still like some Seattle bands and stuff like that, but I remember Hammerbox was in the rotation. There's just something about physical media that kind of gives you a little bit more in terms of nostalgic feeling, or I feel like I feel a lot more creative whenever I look at magazines like this because the 90s was obviously a great time for music and a great time for, well, a lot of things, but every time I look back at these magazines, it's just like, wow, a time that would have been cool to be alive during a lot of great music, a lot of great everything, and it's just like, wow, you know? Not that stuff nowadays is bad, but it's different. But hell yeah, man, shout out The Breeders, one of my favorite bands ever. Now, when I started collecting magazines or just buying magazines with bands that I really enjoy, it was really only Rolling Stones magazines that I was buying. But with time, I started looking at Spin Magazine, started looking at Ray Gun, started looking at just all these different stuff, Melody Maker and Alternative Press, like I showed you, and so much, man. I don't know if there's tiers in terms of magazine collecting, but I feel like Rolling Stones band magazines is a low tier and what I mean by that is I don't know I sound very pretentious and stuff so I apologize for even saying any of those words but yeah I have a lot of Rolling Stone magazines in here and one of them is this blind melon magazine I'd show you it but the cover of them is everybody naked and I don't know if I'll get like a I don't know not copyright strike but something like that on this channel so I will not show it but I'll try to find a picture in here this picture I'm about to show you is not blind melon but it's a cool computer ad I just thought it was very 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 90s and cool ah here's the blind melon section I was looking for look at that they're all in the lake or some water place and they're all chilling and it's pretty cool. And I feel like a lot of people don't know, but I was a huge Blind Melon fan. I'm still a Blind Melon fan. And obviously Blind Melon has a different singer now because Shannon Hoon passed, but I connected so much and still do with Shannon Hoon. After watching the documentary based on his whole life, he pretty much recorded himself from 1990 to 1995, I'm pretty sure when he died. And I was just completely like, Oh my god, I relate so much to this story. It's just about wanting to get out of a small town and wanting to chase dreams and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of people could relate to that. And whenever Shannon Hoon would sing, I was just like the biggest fan. I was just like, oh my god, this is an angel singing to me. And it would remind me so much of my mom and it would make me emotional. I know a lot of people uh, classify Blind Melon as a one-hit wonder, but to me, there's so much more than that, man. So much more than that. I know a lot of people can't get past the voice which i understand if you like it you love it but if you don't like it you're never gonna like it but yeah that's my whole adoration and love for blind melon still sitting in my heart man i know you guys see this foo fighters rolling stone magazine that i ripped out because it was falling to pieces and that's what happens with a lot of my magazines i get these magazines off of ebay and sometimes i don't read the description because i really want a magazine and that's on me i'm not blaming anyone but myself and it falls apart most of the time but i've been doing better in reading descriptions and with the foo fighters magazine i've completely ripped out a bunch of stuff and put it on my walls over there you guys can't see but there's a bunch of magazine rips there's a bunch of magazine pages all over my walls so i'm not the most creative person so i just see something i like and i just put it on my wall i'm like yup fire i don't know if you guys can see but i have a l7 magazine right there fire uh. and that was my favorite magazine at one point but the front cover just fell off and i was like you know what? I got to honor L7 and put them on my wall. So they've just been chilling behind me this whole time. Nice little Nirvana Kurt Cobain section. Hell yes. If you guys watched my Julie interview, I 
gave them a gift and that's what I try to do with all my interviews. I try to give bands something, you know, just in case my interview's trash, they have something good to remember me by. And I gave Julia a Smashing Pumpkins magazine, but that wasn't the first Smashing Pumpkins magazine I've ever had. This one I'm holding right now is a 1994 Rolling Stone magazine, and it's probably my favorites during that uh, Siamese Dream era. And, you know, Siamese Dream, obviously a phenomenal album, a Hall of Fame-worthy album, Hall of Fame band. And Siamese Dream is not my favorite album, if you could believe that, even though it inspires me to this day whenever I play guitar. I'm more of a fan of Gish. You can sense a lot of different influences in the album, and I just love Gish. It reminds me of so many memories in my life, and I love the song Rhinoceros. That's my favorite Smashing Pumpkins song ever. I think what's cool about this magazine, and a bunch of Rolling Stone magazines have uh, this cologne thing, and you can rip the page and smell the cologne and I could still smell this cologne from 1994. Now it might be a little bit suspect for me to shove my nose on this paper but it just smells delicious. If you can see it's this eternity. Yeah eternity for men. I'm gonna sniff it for you guys. Ah, 1994 air baby. Hopefully I don't get like some uncurable disease i doubt that will happen but yeah dude this magazine is my favorite magazine probably i've never heard of this store in my life but have you guys ever been to bob's stores i think that's what that says yeah bob's stores my bad i can't read for some reason so much more color in the 90s so much more creativity i feel like everything is just so much more simplistic nowadays and i don't know where that came from i feel like people are just not as creative and that sucks man it really does suck. But I'm not one of those people that are like, oh man, I should have grown up in the 90s or been in my 20s in the 90s. I like where I'm at right now. I like this era. I like creating stuff and doing all this stuff, man. Would it be cool to go back and just see from the point of view of one day in 1995 or something like that? Hell yeah, I would do that. But I wouldn't stay there. This is my second to last Rolling Stone magazine. And I was heavy on Rage Against the Machine at one point. So... I got this 99 magazine. Not only do you have Rage Against the Machine on or in this magazine, but you got Beck, Foo Fighters, and Fiona Apple. I mean, what a rotation. Here's the Rage Against the Machine section. I kept saying section for some reason, but yeah. And you got Jennifer Aniston in the middle. I don't know where they're running, but they're running. And the Battles of Rage Against the Machine is what it is called. Let me know if you guys have any collections or just a pile of magazines that would be very interesting to hear and let me know your favorite magazine if you're into favorites what the hell am i saying you know what i'm saying you know what i'm asking what's your favorite magazine that's what i'm saying damn it this is my last music magazine notice how i say music and this is the oldest magazine that i have in my entire collection from 1974 rolling stone i have a carpenters magazine paper as can be very beautiful. I don't know if I've ever talked about uh, Carpenters on YouTube. I don't think I have, man. I don't know why I would, but now I'm talking about it or talking about the band and, oh my God, Karen Carpenter. Unbelievable. The whole Carpenters band is just unreal, legendary to this day. It's really trippy to see just 1974 magazines you know and i was a fan and still a fan obviously and whenever i'm a fan of a band i want to get a magazine and that's what i still try to do i used to do vhs's but my vcr does not have a remote and i don't want to buy one but i have a couple of vhs's i'm not going to pull them out because nah, there's not a lot and they're not that interesting check out this technology man look at that and the magazine is falling apart. It's from 1974. What did you expect? That's so dope. That's so crazy. Look at that. That's such great art right there. My neighbors hated me until I got a Marantz. Looks like a stereo from 1974. I wonder how much that costs. One other thing I do whenever I look at these ads in the magazines, I always compare the prices from then and now. And obviously there's a bunch of vintage band t-shirts that go for crazy amounts but i just like looking at little stuff like a cd player or a amp or a guitar and just seeing the difference in prices and inflation that's all the music magazines i have i have a couple different 
genre magazines, and I'm going to show you them. And no, they're not dirty. They are wrestling magazines. And yes, I'm a wrestling fan. Always have been. I've gotten back into it recently, and I've been, you know, whenever I like stuff, I just got to buy something related to it. So I got a WWF magazine, a couple of them. This is my other one. It's the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian. Those two tag teams were my favorite, and I know we're stepping into not music territory, but if you know Edge, which he's on the cover of these, Edge right there. I have a shirt actually as well, and dude, he's my favorite all time. I used to hate him as a kid, but I don't anymore because I understand uh, the whole thing with wrestling now, so yeah that's all i have honestly man it's not too much i'm gonna try to buy more magazines because hell yeah it's fun just looking through and reading stuff if anyone's watching and is a huge fan of the band hum and you have a magazine with hum on it or in it please let me buy it off you i cannot find a magazine related to hum anywhere so yeah i'll definitely take that off your hands that would be amazing thank you i think the next magazines i'm gonna try to get are a pavement magazine and a sunny day real estate magazine and hmm i don't know yeah i think that's it from what i want right now but or a helmet magazine Ooh, that would go crazy love helmet but that's all i have to say and I'm going to wrap up this video now. Thank you guys for watching. I know I have a weird setup and a weird angle. And I have a mic stand just chilling, looking real podcasty on this episode. I have my pillow holding down my mic stand, making sure it doesn't fall on my face. So there's a lot of stuff going on. It looks kind of crazy if you walked into my room from my front door. This was a lot of fun. There might be a future band tea collection video with Alexa in a couple of days. I don't know if she wants to make that today or tomorrow or another day. So yeah, I've been begging her to make a band tea collection video and she just thinks it would be boring. Actually, yeah, she thinks it'll be boring, but she's going to disagree with what I'm saying. So yeah, man, like and subscribe. Keep the music alive. Music magazines will never die.